Perez, Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Yet again, people, yet again, I need about a 40-second intro video so I've got enough time to do... So I tweet it to Facebook. That's not yes, an oxymoron, but I don't care. Hello and welcome to ABW Preview for the... Uh, what I thought was Aston Villa Arsenal turns out it's Arsenal Aston Villa. Thank God I, t- I realised that before I tweeted it because I'd have looked like a right tool. With me this afternoon is the uh, is the person who's helped me break the record for the most number of views this month. It's uh, Mr. D. How are you doing, Treacle? Hello, hello, hello. Are What's good? happening? Yeah, no, I'm all good. I'm all good. I just uh, on the, off the camera. Well, on the camera, even I stuffed my face full of uh, cauliflower. Uh, hash browns and they're actually not that bad. They're actually not that bad. Well, hash um, browns are all right, as long as there's no onions in them. But fucking cauliflower. Oh, hash browns don't really have looks, onion in them. Though. Looks like brain. I ain't no, they're, they're, no, they're actually they're actually quite nice. You wouldn't know the difference, to be honest. I fucking would. Oh, I hate all vegetables. Well, I'm trying to do some different things. You know, I'm trying to be healthier. So there we are. Anyway, it's right. good to be back. Good to be back. Um, it yeah, is. I saw that the uh, the viewership on the on the the post two one victory against the mighty Fulham it was apparently uh, was apparently a winner on the viewership uh, post viewership so uh, fantastic stuff so thanks for everyone that watched the pod and interacted with the pod and uh, and everything like that so I really really appreciate it it was awesome and we, have, and we have had a lovely run of people after going four years stuck at seven thousand uh, YouTube subscribers we've had about sixty already this this month so it's lovely but if you are new, I know it's the like that would be when we did the post game show against uh, Fulham, it had about two thousand, nearly 2,000 views. We had 91 thumbs up. I think that's very good. That's very nice of you. But Thanks to everybody then, for that. I really appreciate it. 94, actually. But considering there was um, uh, 1,682 views, that's that's not even 10%. Come on, people. And if you are new and you do like it, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Uh, email everybody you know a link to the podcast because we'll be doing this amount next month, which will be... Which would be lovely. Let's get on with the show, shall we? Uh, first thing I like to look at is the where can you see it on TV? Right, if you've got an absolute fortune, you don't want electricity, go and pay for BT Sport app. It's on there. It's going to be on BT Sport four packages. I don't know what that means. It's going to be on Villa TV. Now that's nonsense. No, it's not. That's audio. If you want to listen to it, it's on Villa TV. But you have to log in to listen to it. It's on BT uh, Sport, and then you ch- you just chop and change depending on what one you want to watch at that particular time. But um. There are obviously other oh. avenues. <clears throat> I, I have a lovely one um, for only gooners, which uh, cost me uh, 70 quid a year for everything. Oh, yeah. I remember you telling me about that a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, How's that going still? It's all good. Oh, four years in, loving every minute of it. Uh, what We need a country. Let's go and um, ask the, the beautiful viewers what country they want to know um, what channel it is on. Just a little thing we do at ABW, just because I've got no sense. Uh, we've got Rocky is there. The first country I see, I'm going to go and look for. Harvey is there. BX is there. Be excited from BX. Lovely. Um, Pete is there. Rocky's having a chit-chat with himself. That's lovely. Um, Stan the man, who was going to do the post-game show, but decided to go and watch it at the pub. Stanley, I, I totally get down. that. Totally understand that. And um, I do not underget it. Underget it. Oh no, Sean is there. Sai is there. Oh, um, I have a weird feeling this is going to be a dreaded week. Hashtag negative. Oh, shut up, Sai. You, you don't you want any get. of that. Uh, Senny, not Senny sketches. He says hello all. I'm waiting for Chris Lodato from Florida to get back to me. So. uh yeah, I might need someone for the post game show. So uh, you never know. Somebody might get a, a last minute call up. Adam Park, Northern Ireland. You can't ask Northern Bloody Ireland. It's the same as the UK. Stand them. Stand. I'm not turning up. The man says Belize. Well, let's have a little look and see where if we can find Belize, which is where the British Army goes and does um, uh, stuff. Paramount Plus. That was nice and simple. Let's move on from that. It's almost dying a death. The uh, the injury table. 
speak. It is. I nearly called you by your real name then. God, that would have been terrible. I did that once in your it's show. Someone, you can't call him that. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, I'm so used to being called uh, the Deke now. It's just, I'm, I'm not on the verge of deep in it. It's crazy. I'm just so used to it now. Um, injuries. Yeah, we've got Reese Nelson. Thigh injury. Oh, Don't care. Of course. That of course, really of course. And then we've got um, uh, Zinchenko, knee injury, late fitness test, 50%. But you've heard he's not going to be playing. I don't think he's going to be playing. I've heard uh, Twitter, you know, obviously we're in the world of social media now. So everybody is a sports agent. So, um, and he's got these these hardcore, uh, you know, football fans that follow the buses and turn up at the hotels and stuff. So there's rumors that he doesn't turn up the hotel um, before the game. Um, so my assumption is they're probably going to be resting him for the more important game that's going to be happening on Sunday at 4.30 in the afternoon against United. So um, uh, I also told you about Elneny as well. Didn't look like there was anything. I think we were too busy celebrating the 2-1 victory against yeah, Fulham, but apparently, game, um, though, didn't he? but apparently Elneny's got a, a, a really bad injury, um, possibly for out for a considerable time. Um, and obviously party is still out as well. They're still trying to figure things out there. So we are lacking in the DM department. That is for sure. The holding midfielder we are lacking. So we'll, obviously we'll discuss that in the, in the pod today, but I think that's the only injuries. I think that's it in a dream world. Well, that's, I guess it's you know, trying to take the positives someone, out of the negatives. Uh, Sarvesh. Hey guys, first time here. Hello. You deserve a wave for that. Sarvesh, lovely to have you here. And oh, look who it is. It's Colo's used cars. Used to come and watch us all the time. And then I've seen you moonlight in another pod. So that's, uh, if anybody wants a second-hand Fiesta, Colo's used cars will sort you out. You have a warranty that lasts you all of three minutes. Once you're off the lot, it's all your own problems. Sam Fisher wanted Somalia. Um, Adam Peak said he was just testing us with the Northern Ireland. Sean says, uh, do we have a midfielder? No, we don't. Rudy is here. Guys, I'm here. Rudy, you are always here. And Carlito is always here. Could Benny Blanco play as a number six and have Tommy Ashu at right back? That is something uh, we hadn't considered, but I'm going to pretend that we already thought about that. And Sean says, the new white Tommy midfield. Ooh. Anyway, let's go and finish having a look at the injuries. Uh, like you were saying, Zinchenko, we've done. Mohamed El any hamstring strain. Uh, no return date. And Thomas Party uh, says, we still have to make another scan to see the length, but I don't think they will be available. It is similar to last season, but hopefully not as bad. So are we going to nick that um, that person's idea and go thought of playing Ben White as a defensive midfielder? Because our Josh Brighton season ticket holder, Arsenal fan, said that he can play right back, centre back and defensive midfielder. Was he play, was he, did he do it at Leeds where he played DM? There was obviously a lot of talk. Um, I'm sure chat will correct me on this, um, but I'm sh uh, but I'm sure he played DM at Leeds. Or I'm, as I said, I'm probably getting that wrong. Um, lots of uh, lots of social media posts on Twitter and everything like talking about what we potentially could do. And there were some uh, conversations about potential white Benny Blanco playing in that that DM role because we don't have your leads. Thanks, Rocky. Appreciate it. Um, obviously, we don't have Zinchenko. Zinchenko would have probably been. Take a uh, take Xhaka's role. Xhaka playing in the deeper pocket, maybe. Obviously, Xhaka has been a much better footballer playing further up the field, which we never thought was possible. Um, but uh, but there we are. So um, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see um, where things go. But I'm a little bit. I'm obviously I'm anxious to see what's going to happen here. Um, what we what we do need to do is get something sort something out quite fast before before Sunday, whether that means bringing in a player or, or trying to sort something out and trying to work something out on the training pitch, even using Aston Villa today as a, as a chance to try something a little bit different to begin with at the very start of the game, maybe the first 20 minutes and see how it pans out. I think we're good enough. I think we've got the good enough quality to be able to hold off, uh, uh, you know, Leon Bailey and, and everyone else. Um, I guess we're just going to have to see what happens. Just looking at his transfermarket.com, wonderful as always. His season with Leeds, played 30, 30... It says Premier League games for Leeds. No, he didn't. It wasn't in the Premier League, was it? It was in the Championship. I'm just making sure of that. Was he on loan at Leeds? Oh, no, I know what he's done. Anyway, when he was at Leeds, um, it said he played defence midfielder seven times. And then the next season with Brighton, back in the Premier League, he played no times as, a, as he played everywhere as a centre-back. Um, 34 centre back, three at right back. And I can go and have a look at the mighty posh. Come on, the posh. When he was in uh, League One with those, he played uh, centre back 45 times, defensive midfield four times, 
Shall we have a little look at uh, what he did at Newport to see if he played any games with those? That's where he was in League Two. And for Newport, yeah, make sure I've got the right one. He played centre-back 20 times, right-back three times. So he has played there a handful of times, but... Yeah, I think it's. Uh... I think Stan's. I think Stan personally is, is is has got the hit the nail on the head. It's going to be an Erdegaard Jacker with an eight ESR um, playing that in the in the Erdegaard role. Sense. That would make more sense. It's going to you know everyone's been joking around saying they're going to be playing Erdegaard in the deeper role. Um, it's caught us. It, he's caught us in trouble a few times before when we did it last season. But could that really mean your man that. ESR comes in in the Odegaard hole? No, of course. Yeah, I'm happy to see Emil Smith Rowe come on and, and do the business and hopefully do those late runs into the box like uh, like uh, Aaron Ramsey used to do. Um, but we need to sort something out more in the long term. Um, you know, El Nenny was always considered a backup and now he's out for a very, very long time. Partey's only played 58% of the games that he's been available for as an Arsenal player, which is, is an absolutely list. appalling statistic. We need to sort something out on the on the long term. Rumors of possible Danilo coming in from Palmares. Um, but he's only five seven. But you know, who knows? He might be in the new Kante. Who who knows? We don't know. We're speculating at this point. But I think um with only a couple of days left in the transfer window now, obviously today and tomorrow up until uh up until eleven o'clock at night, you know, we've only got a limited amount of time now to be able to go out and maybe hopefully get that signing, which shores things up because you know. We've done all this hard work throughout the summer, signing early and getting the team, you know, gelled. And, you know, we haven't lost a game so far, um, even in preseason up into in the Premier League. And we're still the only team to win 4-4. But we need to sign somebody who can do it in the middle of the park, um, who can compete with party and potentially, you know, as I said to you, I, I don't know if we were talking about this before, saying about how this is pretty much Tierney and Partey's kind of last chance saloon situation where it's not a, a case of about ability, it's a case of, Consistency and availability. Um, if you're being constantly an injured, you can't be a part of. You can't you, exactly as much as as much as we like these players and they're good players and they're transformative and they do really well in the Arsenal lineup. We're struggling with the consistency from them and that's causing us problems. And uh, you know we all know it for sure that we it pretty much cost us Champions League football next se- last season. And I don't want that to happen again this season. So we've got we've got some time and we need to go and make it as a priority to find somebody that can do the business who can compete with Party. And uh, and El Nenny, that is for sure. I like what Keysby Knight has put here. Tommy in CM, why not a large Japanese Santi? <laughs> uh, so well, he's, got both feet. Got... he's got both feet. He's got... Yeah, that's, that's why he's probably saying a Santi because he's got yeah. both feet. Oh, I got some sleep in my eye. Oh, it's terrible. Miguel um, Sarvesh says Miguel uh, Aziz trained with the first team. Reckon he might be on the bench. Well, he's uh, he's a decent player. He hasn't gone out on loan. We've got twenty one out on loan. And he isn't one of them. Uh, Rudy says El Nenny is out for longer. According to Twitter, Party won't be out for long. That should be back against Zurich on the eighth of September. That's according to Twitter. Well, we all we know can all hope and pray. But that's cool. the thing is, you know, at what point is it going to happen again throughout the season? We can't just go, oh, well, you know, what I mean, we can't have him back. That sounds great and all, and hopefully that is the case. But we know it's going to happen again. It's the same thing with the Tierney situation. We signed a world class. Uh, player in Zinchenko that can fill in at left back because we know that Tierney's got the ability but not the consistency due to injury issues and we need to treat the situation as well with party exactly the same yeah we do what's my twitch there so bloody big that's terrible um someone made a point there I've just highlighted BX is Fabio surprise start today hopefully well I think his general position is um in the kind of um the the Bergkamp Erdegaard hole isn't it Yes, right. we could potentially do, you know, the, but the thing is, you know, relying, you're heavily relying on uh, Odegaard to, as, as much as he does tracking back, but you're you're having to rely on him to do the business unless we have, uh, unless we play more aggressive and we have just Xhaka and then uh, a an upside down triangle with Odegaard and Fabio Vieira, but then they're both left pegged. So I don't know. Uh, or, even, or even we could do that because there's obviously a lot of talk about maybe Saka playing in the eight. And we could play Fabio Vieira on the le- on the right. I wouldn't mind that. Um, Sai says Arsenal not going to panic buyer. We knew that from January, but I think the panic buying wasn't going to be in the buying players halfway through the season. I think we could maybe make a couple of moves. Hopefully, I know nothing. Hopefully, we could maybe make a couple of moves in the um, in this window. But I'll leave it a little bit late. But we all knew Party, and when he was at Atletico, never injured. When he's never at Arsenal, injured. out for he's... half the games. How is that even absolutely a thing? ridiculous? Absolutely ridiculous. 
I don't even know what to say about it, to be honest with you. I don't even know. And it's the same thigh injury. It's, again, with the injury that he's got right now, it's the same thigh injury. Um, so, I don't know. Hopefully, um, who put it in? Uh, Rudy. Hopefully, Rudy. Is it Rudy? Yeah, hopefully, Rudy's correct. And he's back, uh, you know, mid-September. But, well, you know, we can't just constantly live on tender hooks with this all the time. We need someone who can do the business as well and can compete with party. I didn't do the overall games against each other. Oh God. So there we've, we've won against Villa. We've won 85, drawn 45 and lost 69. The last three games uh, at the, in the Premier League at um, the Arsenal was the 22nd of October, 2021. We beat them three, one. We scored with party, Aubameyang, Smith Rowe, all in the space of ooh, 23 minutes. And then Jacob Ramsey scored for them on the 82nd. I think that's one of the games where Tyrone Mings tried to kill everybody because he is a, he's a brute of a player and I don't like him. Unless he played for us, then I'd probably think he was good. And the next game at the Emirates was the 8th of November 2020, the dark times. Uh, they beat us 3-0, even darker times. Uh, Saka own goal on 25. Ollie Watkins. Remember when Ollie Watkins was really good? He scored two goals against us that day. Yeah, kind oh, of, um... don't talk about it. No, don't do that. No, <laughs> You're not do the, the no. Curse of Benteke. We mentioned the no. Oh, what <laughs> Watkins is going to be a f he's going to be flying out of the starts, man. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ, gloss over that. And we always like to go three games back. The one before that was the 22nd of September 2019. John Moss as uh, was the referee. It was 3-2 to us. They scored first with McGinn and then uh, Nicholas Pen Pepe penalty. And then Wesley scored in the 60th. And then it was right, there was only 10 minutes to go. Callum Chambers, 81. Abamyang, 84. Bish Bash Bosh, 3-2. Lovely jubbly. And uh, where did that put us up to? I think sometimes it tells you where. Oh, we, were f we were fourth in the league at that point. Wow. And I think, was it uh, Unai Emery was our manager? Dark days, dark days indeed. So, um, yeah, if you had to go for a lineup, because uh, you are a football manager expert, what would you yeah. go for? Um, I would try and keep um, at least some of the consistency when it comes to the back four. So White, um, Saliba, Gabriel, and uh, and Tierney playing uh, playing the back four. Obviously, Ramsdale uh, in goal. Um, you know, we could look at a potential Sambi Lakonga or a Xhaka playing in the deep six. Um, I'm not disrespecting Villa, but this is an opportunity to be able to try something. Um, that's for sure. I don't think anything will change in the top, considering what's made. Uh, you know, if we if we had the same team, we still had Party and Zinchenko. Uh, there'll be, I think, there'll be maybe some talk of maybe resting Gabriel Jesus for Eddie because he came on really well against Fulham, um, and possibly, you know, we don't want to get uh, Gabriel Jesus fatigued, even though he doesn't look like it. So I don't think much is going to change at the at the front. Um, so yeah, Erdegaard. Uh, Martinelli, Saka, and uh, and Gabriel Jesus at the top. So it's just going to be a toss-up between Lokonga and Xhaka playing in the deeper role. And if Xhaka does do that, you know, we could even see maybe a Lokonga playing further up the field or even obviously ESR coming in to do the business in the middle. But, you know, as I said, there could be... There, who knows? Anything could happen. We could be Fabio Vieira, Saka playing through the middle. Anything can happen. But I don't think much is going to change with the rest of it. That's what I think. Anyway. Um, Orbino, by the way, um, got some great stats. Orbino oh, on cool. Twitter, obviously the, the, the stat man. He's the head of Opta. Um, so if you love a good stat, he's great to follow on Twitter at Orbino. Um, there's been 25 goals scored in the last six meetings between Villa and Arsenal um, at the Emirates. Uh, Arsenal teams uh, to win the opening five games is, well, we've got a chance of doing it. And uh, Arsenal's opponents have mustered only eight shots on target. The, uh, the fewest uh, any team has faced in the Premier League. So we're doing that. We're doing the business. So hopefully we can do the business here again tonight against uh, against Villa. And hopefully you haven't jinxed us with uh, Mr. Watkins. Hope, wait and hope and see. I, guess. I ain't having any of this lot. Oh, question here from Pete Colson: Would you prioritise a DM over a winger attacker, a mid -tran midfielder transfer if we can only have one? Yes, we have to, don't we? Yes. Um, as I was saying it to you last time, um, post. Fulham game uh, that the season obviously ends on the 21st of November. So the winter transfer window is kind of going to be treated like a bit of a mini transfer, summer transfer window. It's not going to be treated like a general, normal January transfer window. It's a World Cup uh, year. So that means players are going to move based on their appearances in the World Cup and how good or bad they do. 
Uh, and uh, we'll, we're going to have time to scout players um, and really get a good eye of potential players that we could bring in. So I think Paramount is, is we need uh, something. We need a, a holding midfielder. And then we go out and get the winger striker in January. I think that's probably going to be the smarter play to do. As much as it, we need someone who can give cover to Saka and not burn him out. Because um, it's going to be, I think we've got nine games in October. That's a lot of football in one wow. month. Like a I'm lot, a lot of football. Sleep. That's a lot of football. Um, yeah. So there is obviously worry about Saka getting burnout. But, you know, Gabriel Jesus can play out on the wing and we can play Eddie and, you know, we can make changes. Or Fabio Vieira can play there instead of Saka. Hopefully we can get some minutes into him uh, and get him match sharp. But I think holding midfield is probably paramount for now. And then, as I said, winger striker in the January. Fred Thurbin uh, on YouTube says, I agree that we do need one or two more, but I don't agree with some of the people saying that this will have been a wasted crap window if we don't buy anyone else. We still do, still done great work. It's been a really good window. Of course, Rudy it's been says, a fantastic window, brilliant window, but yeah, we need that. It's like the last summer window. Because of injuries, not because of yeah. uh, we needed it before, but the Elneny party situation is getting a little bit sketchy. That's the only reason, I think. Rudy says, Tommy coming in and White playing a deep six. That's it with the changes. Uh, Phil says he's late. Didn't need to know, but nice of you to tell us. Corey Lane says, hello, everybody. And uh, Sensual Goat says, thank you, Danny. Llamas are the goat guardians. Yes, this is when Raj Patel used to come on this podcast. He used to have the Raj, the Giroud Llama. And so we have a llama and a goat on the screen at the same time for all the people at home on the bus and having a poo. If you're walking the dog... Shout out Mikel Arteta's army. And if you're driving the car listening to this, I want you to open the window, stick your head out, honk, 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 Mikel Arteta's army. And then um, hopefully you won't get beaten up by... Uh, Do the Saliba uh, chant. Uh, that's a bit difficult. I'm, even I'm not sure how to go. Personally, I'd go if... Uh, I've got a little thing here where it comes up with the, the formation. Um, formation one. I think looking at this, that's, I, I'd keep the, the same... It back four there and put tyranny at left back and then i'd have Xhaka playing deep have Erdegaard playing next to him and then in the Erdegaard position i'd have uh, smith Rowe keep Saka on the right jesus up front and martinelli on the left if that makes sense to anybody i think uh, arteta isn't going to want to change things around too much i think he'd rather keep the same players that have been playing all the other four games this season and then shuffling around everything and then you only have to bring in uh, one player uh, other than uh, tyranny which is uh, probably the best way to go um, what else have people been saying? Um, Ray Anderson is there. Says, uh, hey, everybody, Danny, are you going to be on till the team comes out? Yes. on to team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we start an, half an hour before the, the teams are released at uh, an hour before kickoff. Kickoff's at half seven. So, uh, no. We unless we're on the time. pod. Unless we're on the pod for another, because you said only <laughs> half an hour. Unless you unless yes. you are on the pod for another thirty three minutes, that is not no. going to be happening. No. Which is because I've come to the realization that we'd we'd spend half an hour doing this, and then by the time I read it and upload it, people have got twenty minutes to listen to a half hour show, and that's not going to work, is it? So I've decided we do these. We start these. What time do we start at half? I'd start it two hours before the show, the game starts, and then do half an hour, and then half an hour to update it. So you've got an hour to watch a half hour show which logically makes much more sense um useless pathetic noob says tappy tappy lads let's get going yeah how many i don't even bother looking at we've got 22 thumbs up that is that's very nice of you thank Apart you very much guys. it is it's it's lovely i can see you all there oh i've got an advert i'm gonna let the advert run i'm gonna make all oh, got 24 thumbs up thank you very much everybody um uh, ray says great yeah we did do it before but i thought there's no point I was waiting, doing it so that we can see the lineups and then no one's got time to listen to the show. So you had to pick one or the other, Deke. So you either saw the lineups or you didn't get to see the show because you didn't have enough time. Talby Fool is there. Evening, gentlemen. Let's go 2 0 with Saka scoring both. Ah, yes. Um, I've, I've got a picture we definitely to share need with to... you lot. Today at the game, we have this beautiful look at that. That is Mike, uh, I can't remember his surname, something Feinberger. And we have Nick. Our That's very Tolly, isn't it? That's Tolly. Uh, I don't know. I've never been That's in there. That's the Tolleton. That's the Tolleton, that is. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's the Tolleton. What's your pub of choice when you go there? I used to go Tolleton all the time, um, yeah. but their their door staff are a little bit handsy. Oh. So, a little bit handsy. A little bit handsy. Oh, they like um, to give you too much frisking. 
too much frisking for me. Um, but yeah, no, normally Tonneton uh, is my is kind of my go-to. It's literally down the road from uh, from the Emirates. I do like the Tonneton. I've been uh, to a good pub, pub once in 406 football games, not all, most of Arsenal. I went to the pub once. It was on New Year's Day. We were playing QPR. That must have been the game that we lost. No, it wasn't. It wasn't QPR. It was someone else. Might have been West Ham, so I had a West Ham fan with me. Either way, we went into the Gunners and sat in there, and I didn't like being around people drinking because they're idiots, and they make a lot of noise, and I don't sure. like it. I No, I totally appreciate that. Well, the, the Gunners, mm. you were in the Arsenal pub, the Arsenal the one that's got all the memorabilia or everywhere and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't like it. Um, so uh, where are we up to? Ah, Evan Fox. That's a new name. Hello, Evan. What oh, picture of you? Is that you outside the uh, the the Emirates there? Very nice picture. Just dropped Sambi in. the Armoury, that, isn't it? So that's out the Armoury. Okay. Obviously, the stadium's in the background, but the art is there in front of the Armoury near the cannon. Uh, uh, just drop in Sambi. He'll get support from White and yeah, that could potentially what the yeah they, that yeah, could happen. Not, that could happen. We've not, we've not seen enough of Sambi Laconga this season. That's but the I problem. Think we saw in the All or Nothing. He's very very quiet, isn't he? I love, I love, I love. I'm sure we we've all seen it, but we, I love the bit when Eddie just fucking slaps him with words. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I've not, I love I've that. not watched. I'm on an Arsenal high at the moment, so um, so I've not watched episode seven because it's going to bring me down. Sure. So gonna, all, uh, yeah. No. Uh, there's no. There's not like a spoiler <laughs> alert. We've all we've all lived and breathed it. We all know what's going to happen. It's not like this. <gasps> what's going to happen, guys? And Evan says if he's fit. Matt Roberts <laughs> is here. Hello, Matt. How are you? A woman Arsenal ladies football expert does lots of really good things. And um, where are we down to uh, Evan again? Uh, straight in with another comment. Seems to be 50 50 at the moment. Spent all morning hunting for info. Yeah. Ray Anderson says, I heard that he trained. Uh, Evan again. I think Sintenko brothers... trained as well. Sintenko trained as well, apparently. So there was obviously talk about him coming back, but I have heard that he's maybe not made the bus. So I, as I said, I think he's just going to get rested for United. It would make sense, wouldn't it? I'd rather him play against yeah. United than I would do against Villa. Yeah. Evan says, my brothers took me to my first game in that picture nice. for my bachelor party from New York City. New nice. York. If you uh, had uh, Glenn on for the Sunday roast and uh, he's from New York. Uh, Ray says, episode seven and eight is great. Chirobi is there. Oh, Hello, sir. Um, Gary is there. Hello, Danny. Friends and chat room. Phil says, get it done, Danny, then can put it in a box and never open it. I don't know what I said. How am I supposed she to remember? Said, what did I say? I have I no know. idea. The, the thing is, with chat, right, I've noticed it. Obviously, I've, I used to stream on Twitch for years. There's always moments where you, 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 see, you have a conversation, and then a couple of minutes later, you'll see something in chat which corresponds to that. But you don't yeah. remember what you said, and then you kind of <laughs> sit there for like ten minutes trying to piece up the words again. Like, okay, right, I may have said this, and that's generally what happens. Um, it's very true. Uh, Sam says, "Who's next on the sack list?" Well, hopefully, Gerard after a five 0 win today. Gerard, Gerard, <laughs> Gerard, Gerard, one hundred percent. I can't believe what Bournemouth did uh, to Parker. I can't believe it. He beat Villa. Loses yeah. to uh, to Liverpool and Arsenal, which is you know it is what it is. Unfortunately, it's a nine nil drubbing, but it's Liverpool. You know, yeah. I can't. I don't know. Everyone's waiting for Dyche. <laughs> I was listening to stick um, in. I think it was. I was listening. I've, I've gone back to listen to podcasts again. You can tell Arsenal were doing well. Normally, I, I avoid them. I listen to the totally. I think, yeah, show I th I, I, and we're the in a real, one. A real high saying, right now, aren't we? Yeah, and they were saying that is there a psychological reason why the, the record win in the Premier League is only by nine goals? There's been no 10 0. Is that is that a kind of gentleman's agreement? Or because you look when Liverpool scored their goals, they scored where well, was 7 0 up after an hour, weren't they? Or I, something think, like I that. think I think winning five or six nil is more than enough. I think nine nil is a drub in. I think I think there's no I don't think there's any gentleman agreements when they're winning nine nil. Uh yeah. and then and then you know Jurgen Klopp goes and patronizes cut a parker by giving yeah. him a little cuddle and it's like jesus christ that was uh, uh that's pretty embarrassing pretty embarrassing but you know what they would expect that bournemouth have literally spent i think they've spent they've brought in five players four or five players and they've spent less than 25 million what 25 million pound in total what are they expecting i'm not entirely sure what they're expecting this is not a football manager you can't find these bargain bucket players and hopefully just jam them in and hope for the best 
this is this is Prem, and Prem's it's, it's bigger and stronger and better than ever. You know, not every it's not top four anymore, or even top six. You know, a lot of teams now are pushing uh, for those uh, Euro, uh, those you know European spots. That's for sure. So, oof. yeah. Yes, indeed. Right, we've been going the half an hour. People, I want you to put your prediction for the game and your first goal scorer. We'll highlight them. And if you could be bothered to go to YouTube, I'm going to go and check our YouTube, actually, and see if anybody am bothered. Because you don't, you don't remind me to go and do it. You need to go to the preview game for the Fulham one. And then uh, only 30 thumbs up. So uh, only The only comment we had in the preview for Fulham was Archangel. I thought the yellow-green training top was a homage to our Brazilian links. There you go. That is the oh, no one could be bothered to go and put that in 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 the chat. Your your prediction. So uh, Pete Colson is going uh, a tight two one. Before you say uh, that, Danny, apparently Adam said that uh, they fired him over disagreement because he doesn't have confidence in the team. That's if that's oh, if yes. that's what actually happened, then f- okay, fine. Okay, um, fine. Because yeah, Bournemouth uh, got a lot of pushback on socials. A lot, a lot of pushback on socials. It's a bit, it's a bit strange, but he's got Fulham promoted twice, Bournemouth promoted, uh, so he's, he won't be short of getting a job. I bet Sunderland are kicking themselves because they they've just got in um, the bloke who was at Blackburn last season. They got him in as a manager. Uh, they sat the Dundee United manager as well after he got smashed nine nil. So, uh, see if you want your player out of the club, lose nine nil, he'll be gone. Unless you Southampton, who lost twice under Hassan, who, Hassan, who, Mr. Hassan, something. Uh, so we're doing predictions, bam, and he's called you Bex, and oh yeah, because I see BX, and I watch someone on on you on Twitch called BX Gun, uh, BX. I oh, know she's got guns and she's mad. Um, Deke, what's going to be your prediction of first goal scorer? Three uh, 0 Gabriel Jesus. We need him to start scoring now. Yes, um, I suppose I should go and have a look at Aston Villa and see what their previous score um, results were. And there's only four to look at. They lost 1-0 at home to West Ham in the uh, the Premier League. They went to Bolton and smashed them 4-1 in the League Cup. They lost 3-1 away at Palace. They beat Everton 2-1 at home. They lost 2-0 away at Bournemouth. Um, so that's it. So away from home, they're rubbish. They like to concede a lot of goals. I'm going to go 3-1. Who Did you say 3-1? I said 3-0, Gabby. Oh. Well, we've got we've seen like we say in the last preview show, Ramsdale likes to throw the ball at a defender and bounce back. So he's going to do one of those again because he won't learn, but he's lovable. You can't can't be angry with that. So I'm going to go three one first goal scorer Saka. Who did you say? Gabby yeah, Jesus. Uh, Sean, both, of them, oh, both of those players need goals. Both of them, Saka and, uh, and Gabriel Jesus both need goals. So. Phil Macker says four 0 Jesus. Sean that. says uh, two. <laughs> says Villa 2, he, Arsenal 1. He's got the fixture the wrong way around. Sean says Arsenal you. 1, Villa 2. Ollie Watkins to get two goals. It's all my fault. Yep. Don't hate me. Uh, it's, it's my make sure, guys, Sam- if, if there is a loss, make sure you return here for the post and absolutely murder him. Uh, Sam Fisher says, I also got the, the thing back to front. Have I put it on here back to front? No, I haven't. You, you map it to doing it back to front. Huh? Arsenal nil, Aston Villa 5, Gerard to wear an Undertaker hat. I saw a kid at a barbecue in some place inside, and he ate, and he had the uh, he had a Undertaker mask on, and as they were flambéing stuff behind him, you see all the flames. <laughs> anyway, uh, you mean Kane has... mask? You mean Kane? No, no, it was it was definitely the Undertaker. He did Undertaker the... didn't have a mask; he, he had the... a hat. Yeah, no, no, the kid, that was Kane. Kane had, no, had a mask. He had the mask with Undertaker. the black and red. No, the kid was wearing an Undertaker face mask to look like him. Oh, oh, sorry, my bad. I didn't know it was a face mask. I thought it was yes. just the mask that apparently he wore. So, okay, my bad. Carry Anik on. is new. Anik, if you if you like it, give it a thumbs Hello. up and, and the subscribe. He says, 3-1, Jesus and Saka to score for us. Come on, you gunners. Gary says, I predict the sun will come out tomorrow. La Arsenal win by three. Yep. Mark Backridden, 3-0. Jesus to get two and Martinelli nice. to get the yeah, other. Like BX 4 0 the Arsenal. Ray Anderson 3 0 Martinelli. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, as I said, we know we're, we're really going to start cooking. seeing. Yeah, yeah, Martinelli's going to really shine this season. Uh, Matt says, oh, it's Tony Mowbray. That was it. Who's got the new Sunderland job? BX Jazz Gunner says, Jesus, Eddie, and Odegaard to score. 
Colo's Indeed. used cars. Colo, what what decent cars have you got on the lot at the moment? You never know. I might be able to flog one for you. We want we want our usual twenty five percent. Says three one Ben White. Why not? Okie dokie. And lots of numbers. Eddie could hit couldn't hit a barn door. Hopefully you've you've out jinxed my Ollie Watkins and Eddie for a hat trick. Lovely. <laughs> Rocky has gone three nil. Rudy yeah, Rastos. It will be a nervy game for sure. Hope of a 2-1 win for the mighty Arsenal again. And lots of numbers. 3-1 Xhaka. Matt Jacobo. says, be glad I'm not on last time. Villa beat us 2-1. That's we don't talk about it. Be it Skana Danny, that was a hibachi restaurant. Oh, you've seen Love it. Love hibachi restaurants. Yeah, I just um, want all the meat and I want it well done. Give me it. Feed me ooh, it. What? Sam Fisher, Arsenal to over-celebrate. Beware of Richard Keyes. No celebrations tonight. Did no you Did you hear about... Did you, obviously, yeah, you heard right. about the Richard Keys rant and it. all of that. So apparently, Nigel De Jong was like, "Mate, you need to calm it down. You're like, you're getting a little bit, a little bit <laughs> passionate about something so ridiculous. It's a shame he didn't do the old uh, Jabby Alonso karate fucking actions against him." Salvesh says, "Would love to see a pen scored versus Martinez. Looking forward to the shit housery. Uh, so that's pen save against Harry Kane. Oh, of course, we're playing, we're playing against Martinez. Of course, and mm. Callum Chambers. Why are we playing against another former Arsenal keeper? How many former Arsenal keepers are in the league? This is crazy. Uh, we just played uh, Leno. Now we've got Leno. Martinez and West Ham, and West Ham Fabianski. This, that's a lot of keepers." <laughs> there is a lot of ex-Arsenal players a playing lot. in the league. Right, people, we have been going 36 minutes. There's 54 of you watching now. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're new... Well, 43 it... likes. Awesome yeah. stuff, guys. Thank 40, you so 40, much. 43 yeah, if you haven't already liked the video, guys, chuck a like on it. Obviously, share hmm. this as well. We'll get the positive vibes going before the game. Uh, but cool beans, baby. And Arsenal, Arsenal need to do it for these two homeless bums. Look at them. They, they've actually been asked not to stand in the same part of the, as the pub of each, as each other for subsidence, subsidence reasons. So Nick and Mike are at the game. There's a few others going to be there. Um, if you like if you like what you see here, uh, possibly subscribe. That would be lovely. We're also on Twitter at the AFC podcast. We follow back anybody. As long as you've got an Arsenal picture or an Arsenal in your bio, we'll follow you back. We're at 31,000 followers-ish at the moment. That's pretty good. I've been making a note of uh, of following more people. Um, Pete says, uh, cheers for the preview, guys. Lovely. We will be back probably 10 minutes after the after the game, five to 10 minutes, depending who's going to be on. Hopefully, it's going to be Chris Lodato from Florida. If he doesn't turn up, I don't know who I'm going to get because, as usual, none of my lot can be fucking bothered. Uh, uh, Anik says, Simon Jordan on TalkSport supported Richard Keyes. Sad that these dinosaurs get to dictate football narratives. Simon Jordan, I don't trust anybody with I think that. That's just a, I think that's just a drone mentality. I wouldn't, look, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's just a drone uh, mentality. You shouldn't be watching talk sport. It's an absolute waste of time. Deke, where can people find you if they like the cut of your jib? They like they can find me right here. That Deacon <laughs> Justified. That's where you can Excellent. find me. And, and you'll be back on the Twitch, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sometime yeah. yeah. So back, uh, back end of October, sometime November time, uh, back on the old uh, football manager. If you're interested in watching me play football manager, I'm most likely going to be doing a derby save because they're in League One now. So it makes things a little bit more interesting than just championship. Um, so if you're interested in football manager and maybe if you want to talk about mental health as well, I'm a big advocate for men's mental health and men's health in general. So if you've got some stuff going on in your life and you want a piece of nugget of advice, um, I'm 35 and I've been through the shit house ringer many, many times with lots of different things from, from depression to PTSD, suicidal thoughts and, and all of the, and all in between homelessness and everything in between. So if you have all the good stuff, but it, it, you know, I want to try to turn those negative situations into positive situations. So if I can give you a piece of advice um, that I've been through myself and hopefully get you out of a dark, dark situation, then I will do my utmost to do just that. Um, so that will be me um, start of November time um, playing football manager and talking the business about men's mental health. Because that game does send you mental. It does. It, well, it's football. <laughs> it's football. Of course, it t takes you, sends you mental. It's, a, it's literally a game of databases. It's just a big database. <laughs> so there we are. It is indeed. Uh, Danny, oh, everyone, everyone, the, everyone in the chats, like <laughs> everyone in the chats, talking about how much long uh, left until the, uh, the team sheets come out. I think, uh, I, I think that's uh, I think that's them going. Maybe you should just keep it going. Could it keep it going? No, keep it going? can't do that. These shows should have been about twenty twenty five minutes, not thirty nine. We always minutes. ramble. 
we, we bo- we're both really bad with tangents. We end up just talking uh, about fucking cauliflower hash browns and stuff. It, it, it goes on and on. I might order Chinese for dinner tonight. Not well, there you me. go. There you go. Meat the missus wanted Chinese tonight, but uh, we, uh, we're we trying to be good and try and quell back those takeaways. Yeah, well, I've got I've got podcasts to do. I can't afford to be going and doing it. Actually, I've got sure, sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Cool that. Right, people, we are whiffling and waffling. We will see you five to ten minutes after the game. Thank you very much, you beautiful bastards. And Come on, uh, Arsenal. Here is our, my luck. I'm going to make more. I'm going to make different versions of the outro videos because these tend to get a little bit boring. But here you go. If you wonder what the outro video is, it's the invincible shirt numbers going from goalkeeper down to the five substitutes. And it is our beloved Steve, uh, Lord Hillwood and Dave Boonaholic. Um, some of their excerpts and clips from uh, stuff that you didn't see on podcast because I used to record the shows and the pre pre po pre podcast shows and post podcast stuff i'd record it all so i've still got loads of recordings of them two talking away and having a giggle that was never made it to podcast so here they both are thank you very much everybody and we will see you later come on you gunners let's make it five in a row top of the league hell yeah baby (laughs) as soon as i scored that goal i was fucking livid get down dog splendid business he nearly caught the bloody thing what are you talking about (laughs) So I've just eaten a full quiche. Well, you don't often see them at Ig. So when you see them in the supermarket, they need to be swagged. Microwave immediately and get the brown sauce on them and bosh, Bob's your uncle. Never in doubt.